This is the Asus ROG Delta S Wireless, a new versatile headset from the guys over at Asus. It's got an unusual microphone design with the beam forming mics being situated inside the ear cups. So no more broken detachable mics or annoying boom arms blocking your view. It certainly looks the part, but does it perform? Hey guys, I'm Matt and welcome back to Kit Guru. As I mentioned in the intro, and as you've probably guessed from the title, today I'm going to be giving you the rundown and my thoughts on the Asus ROG Delta S wireless headset. Now this headset retails for 169 euros. We're still waiting on confirmed GBP pricing. So going off that euro pricing, that is quite high, so it's got a lot to live up to. With features like 50 millimeter drivers, multiple connectivity options and AI noise cancellation, it certainly offers a lot, but can it deliver on that pretty high price tag? So kicking things off with the packaging and the unboxing, the Delta S Wireless comes in a very sturdy and very well presented box, as is the usual for Asus ROG products. The main box is very, very good quality and protects the headset really, really well. The front shows a picture of the headset itself in a glossy finish. There are small logos which show that this headset is both Discord and TeamSpeak certified, as well as being supported for use of the PlayStation 5. The back of the box has some quite detailed information on the features of the headset, which is nice for anyone that will be checking this out in a physical store rather than just reading about it online. The high quality packaging continues when you open the box. There's a nice foam backed piece of cardboard sitting on top of the headset for protection and also to deliver you the cheesy, you're a master gamer now message, which is a bit on the corny side, but they didn't include any stickers, so they've got to get the gamer vibe to come across from somewhere, right? The headset itself sits inside a plastic insert, which holds it in place really, really well and will protect it really good during shipping. Finally, underneath that, there is a box that contains the alternate ear cups and a few other goodies. This headset comes with both mesh covered and protein leather covered versions, but we'll touch on that more later. There is the disappointingly short one meter USB-C to USB-A charging cable, USB-C wireless connectivity dongle, and a USB-A to USB-C converter. So looking at the design of the Delta S, the Delta S wireless looks all right in my opinion. I'm not blown away by the looks of it, but then at the same time, I don't think it looks bad. It's a pretty generic looking headset. I do like the use of the matte black plastic around the outer edge of each ear cup though. Matte black is always a good look in my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you agree with that. The headband of the headset is covered in protein leather, which is then embossed with the Republic of Gamers branding. There is quite a generous amount of cushioning on the underside of the headband, and I've found that this headset is pretty comfortable on the top of my head. The headset adjustment is pretty robust and it should have enough movement to fit almost anyone. And now while there is an inner metal band used to strengthen the headband, it is disappointing to see so much plastic used on a headset at this price point. The covers for the adjustable section of the headband, along with the ear cup brackets themselves, are both plastic. Although they do feel good quality, I just can't look past the plastic used for their construction. It will break much sooner than metal. There is a nice contrast between the colour on the ear cup brackets and the rest of the headset, but this is the only colour available as far as I can see and it would have been nice to have seen the headset available with different colour schemes. The ear cups themselves both have the Asus ROG logo on the outside and are finished in that matte black plastic that I mentioned earlier. They have quite an extreme D-shaped design which on first impressions did look a bit strange but it doesn't affect the comfort at all. This headset feels nice and comfortable and I haven't had any issues, I haven't had any pain in my ears or around the arms of my glasses. The Delta S wireless comes with two different types of ear cushions in the box. One that are finished with mesh outers and protein leather inners, while the other are finished completely in 100% protein leather. My review unit came with the leather version pre-installed and I ended up changing them over to the mesh version after about two minutes of wearing the headset. I found the leather cushions made my ears very hot and I didn't really like how they felt at all. The mesh cushions on the other hand are very comfortable, very breathable, and I much prefer them over the lever option. The left hand ear cup houses the controls for the Delta S wireless. 
There's a volume rocker slash mic mute toggle, a button for skipping, playing and pausing tracks as well as activating pairing mode when you're in Bluetooth, a three-way toggle switch for selecting which connection mode you'd like as well as turning the headset off, a small LED which indicates pairing and charging status and the USB-C connection port for charging the headset up. All of the controls feel well made and robust, the volume rocker especially, it feels great and it doesn't rattle or move as they sometimes can. The connectivity toggle does seem a bit counterintuitive though. When the headset powers off, which is a setting that can be adjusted in the software, which we'll talk about more in a minute or two, but when that headset powers off, you have to move the toggle switch to the off position and then back to either the 2.4 gig wireless position or Bluetooth position, depending which one you were using. And that can be a bit finicky when, you, when you're wearing the headset, if it powers off and you wanna quickly switch it, then it, it just isn't great. The 2.4 gig dongle can be neatly stored in a slot found on the bottom of the right ear cup, which is a nice little feature that should stop you from losing it. As I mentioned, this headset can be connected via 2.4 gig wireless and Bluetooth but you can't use these connections simultaneously. It's one or the other. I tested a phone call while on the Bluetooth connection, and I was told by the person on the other end of the phone call that the sound quality was good, even when leaving my phone in one room and walking into another while talking. There was a slight delay though, and I couldn't see any way to adjust the audio settings or EQ while I had the headset connected to my mobile. The mic quality when connected to PC is another story though. The microphone can be adjusted quite a lot using Asus's Armoury Crate software, but unfortunately I found this to make very, very minimal difference when testing. The noise cancellation on this headset is not great. Rather than me tell you about it, you can take a listen. Here's a more in-depth than usual microphone sound test because we have a few settings to go through. We'll go through all of them and I'll show you the software on the screen as I turn them on and off so you can hear the difference. Hey guys, so we are jumping into Armory Crate to do a microphone test on the Asus ROG Delta S wireless. So the microphones are built into the ear cups on this headset. So we're, as you can see from the screen, all of the settings for the microphone, noise cancellation, the noise gate, perfect voice is all turned off at the moment and I've got my TV on which is in the same room as me so you're probably going to be able to hear that in the background while I'm talking this is also a good chance for you to hear the actual quality of the microphone coming straight through OBS with no noise suppression no filters no EQ no nothing done to it all so we're just going to go through the settings one by one turning them on and off so you can hear the difference so first we'll activate the noise gate so noise gate is now on and at about it's about 30 percent there it is at exactly 30 percent there we go so while i'm talking this is a quick test i'll just say some random words and we're just going to crank that up a little bit we'll take it up to 60 percent and the noise gate it may be affecting my voice i suppose the results are going to come from when i listen to this in the edit afterwards and when you guys watch it so we'll just crank that up to a hundred percent now so that's a noise gate on 100%. So that should be adjusting the open and close thresholds of the decibel levels of when I'm talking as to when it's going to open and start picking up my voice. We'll do these one at a time to begin with and then we'll go through and add them all in at the same time and we'll see if that makes a difference. Perfect voice, that is now turned on. So you should have just heard a difference in my voice. That is set at 80%. We'll take it down again and we'll start... We'll start, we should, you heard it with it off a second ago, so just to go back, this is with it off, perfect voice completely off. We'll turn it on and set it to 30%. So there is perfect voice setting on at 30%. You may be able to hear a difference. Let us know in the comments what you think of all these settings as well. I'll crank that up to 60%. So there we go, that is perfect voice at 60%. What do I sound like? What sort of sound quality are you getting through the video? We'll crank that up to 100% now. So that is perfect voice at 100%. You, we haven't touched noise cancellation yet, so you probably still can hear Dickinson's real deal in the background, which is just playing on my TV as a test. Uh, again, we'll turn that off now, and we'll move down to look at AI noise cancellation. So at the minute it is completely off. 
and we're picking up quite a bit of background as I'm watching I'm telling this by the levels I can't really hear too much because these do block out quite a lot of sound from the outside world I can see the noise levels bouncing up the noise floor is quite high on the OBS meter the audio meter so we're going to stick AI noise cancellation on that is it on now with it at a low setting so I'll just be quiet for a second so you can pick out the TV again and we're going to turn it up to mid this is the mid setting for AI noise cancellation we will do some tests with keyboard typing keystroke noise as well in a second I just wanted to use the TV as a good example because some people that have got their rigs around living rooms or offices or kids and stuff like that you might have a bit of noise in the background just from everyday life so I wanted to give you a good example of how this headset deals with it and finally we'll turn that up to high this is high noise cancellation see if you can pick up my voice any clearer I wasn't too impressed with this when I've been using it on discord it picks up a lot of background noise and I wasn't too impressed with the noise cancellation if I'm completely honest. We will now turn on the noise gate and we'll turn on perfect voice. So this is all of the microphone settings all turned on and all at max. This is what the, the microphone sounds like with those on. I've found when I listen to it, it sounds heavily compressed. It takes a lot of clarity away from your voice. Uh, see what you think let us know in the comments what you think and drop a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far so now we'll move on I will turn the TV off quickly and we'll do some keyboard typing sounds to see what that sounds like so now the TV noise has gone from the background we're going to test out keyboards I've got two different types of keyboards in front of me I have my Logitech G915 which has tactile switches they're not very noisy but we will try that and then I also have another keyboard which I can't tell you what it is because it's due for review soon but that has different types of switches just linears so we're going to test one and the other and we'll see well first of all we'll turn off the noise cancellation and we'll turn off the noise gate and I'll do a bit of typing this is linear switches So that was linear switches. Now we're going to give you the low profile tactile switches from my Logitech G915. So here we go. There we go. Now we're going to stick on some noise cancellation. So we'll turn that on. Start with it at low. I'll type a little bit on this on the Logitech and then I'll increase it so you can hear how the, the microphone deals with the keyboard noise. This is low. I am typing quite aggressively just to try and let so you can hear how this works. We'll move to mid. So this is, if you were getting into a game, you're going to hit your keys quite hard. So this is how it copes with that. Moving up to high, finally, this is high AI noise cancellation on the Asus ROG Delta S Wireless. This is my Logitech G915 with tactile switches. Quick sound test on the noise cancellation. So there we have it guys this is also the microphone that you're going to get this is how it sounds and the feedback from my friends on discord has been that this isn't the greatest microphone there's a lot of background noise i have tried resetting my discord settings the audio settings back to default to try and deal with it every single piece of noise cancellation echo cancellation and noise reduction within discord is turned on as well as running this at high on the noise gate and on the AI noise cancellation, and it doesn't seem to make that much of a difference. But let us know what you think in the comments below. So the sound that's put out by this headset, the Delta S is a very customizable when it comes to EQ and tweaking the sound it puts out. There are plenty of options found in Asus's Armory Crate software. The presets, which are called sound optimizations, let you quickly choose a mode that is meant to suit the type of content that you're listening to. I'm not too sure why there is a generic gaming option 
And then there are also genre specific settings for FPS, racing and RPG. And the only difference I've found between them that is the level of bass boost and compression which is applied to the audio. And then the generic gaming mode applies a slight bit of voice clarity which sounds to my ears like it just boosts the frequencies around the 1K range, which you can do that when you're setting it up customized anyway. There is an option called Customize found under the Sound Optimization menu, which as far as I can tell, is meant to be used for setting up a personalized collection of settings. This is great, but all of the settings can be changed in each of the presets anyway, so it's a little bit pointless, and it can throw you off a little bit when you first start using it. Now, when you switch to Music Mode, this will activate reverb by default. And while this can be nice, especially if you listen to something like Dave Gilmore bending away during a solo, but I'd rather turn it off and leave reverb and other effects to the producers who create the music that I'm listening to, although it is nice to have the option to add some reverb on if you want it. This headset does get pretty loud and it's capable of serving up a rich bassy experience, even at high volume. So overall, this headset can produce great sound in audio, but that's only after a fair bit of tweaking. Out of the box, the sound was okay, but it really livened up once I dialed in the specific sound I was looking for. Hey guys, I've jumped over quickly into a sort of gaming slash streaming setup, as I'm guessing that if any of you out there do consider this headset, then you're maybe going to be using it in a similar sort of situation to this. I just wanted to spend a minute or two talking about the surround sound and gaming audio performance of the ROG Delta S Wireless. At the minute, I've been playing a lot of Escape from Tarkov, as you can see. Uh, this is a game that relies heavily on sound. The sound is really good, and I can say that this headset with its virtual 7.1 surround sound, has performed pretty well. I haven't had any problems placing the direction of sounds or figuring out which direction I'm being pushed from. And it hasn't performed any differently to any other headsets that I've ever used in this game, to be fair. Uh, the audio quality is very good. Once you've been through that initial setup and configured the EQ to how you like, I don't bother using any of the gaming modes or anything like that. There is a game mode specifically for FPS, but I haven't even touched that. I've set up the the EQ as I like and just left it at that, to be fair. And, and it's worked pretty well. I haven't got any complaints about the surround sound or about the audio performance in general while gaming using the ROG Delta S wireless. So let's move on and look at the software for this headset, Asus's Armory Crate software. Setting up the software for the Delta S wireless was, in a word, painful. I've got an Asus motherboard in my PC and I've had issues with Armory Crate before, so I didn't have it installed before testing this headset out. I encountered multiple errors when trying to install the software, which then meant I had to use a specific uninstall tool to remove it along with the abundance of services that come with it before attempting a reinstall. More specifically relating to the Delta S wireless though, the controls found within Armory Crate for the headset are quite in depth. There are three main tabs, one for updating the firmware, one for checking battery charge level and adjusting the sleep mode setting. And then finally, there's a tab for adjusting the audio settings of the headset, which we looked at in the previous section. The software user interface is clean and it ties in all the Asus products you may have in your system. But this software is probably the worst I've ever experienced and ever used from any hardware manufacturer. It's buggy, it's slow, it installs an offensive amount of bloat in the background, be it services or modules for RAM that I don't even own. It's notoriously bad and plenty of other users feel the same way when looking online. Asus really need to up their game in regards to companion software. The stated battery life for the Delta S wireless is 25 hours and the headset does have fast charging, so you can get three hours of usage from just 15 minutes of it being plugged in. And during my tests, I found the battery life to be okay. It isn't anything special. The specs are semi-accurate. I experienced a rough average of about two hours use for a 10% battery drain. This is using a brand new battery though, so time will tell how this battery health stands up after it's been through multiple charge cycles. The battery life is average, if you're taking this away from home for more than a day, then you're probably gonna to wanna to take a charger or a battery pack with you. The included charging cable is only one meters long, 
And if you're like me and have your PC positioned a little bit away from your monitors, then this is gonna be an issue. If I plug this headset into my PC to charge it, then I can't use it while it's charging. The cable just isn't long enough. A two metre cable would have been really nice to solve that issue. One metre just is not long enough. So my closing thoughts and opinions on the Asus ROG Delta S wireless are that it's okay. I've not been overly impressed with it. Although it can be set up to produce decent sound, the microphone is very average. I've been left scratching my head a few times after changing a noise cancellation setting, for example, and then it appearing to have changed absolutely nothing. On the flip side, the headset is pretty comfortable, especially when you've got those mesh ear cushions fitted. I've not experienced any issues with head pain during my testing. The audio produced is great after you've spent a bit of time configuring the EQ, and I've never had any connectivity issues. It always just connects straight away as soon as I turn it on. It charges quickly, which is great as that helps to combat the average battery life. The software is terrible though. With most of the gamers that this headset is aimed at more than likely using a PC, that's gonna be a problem. Armory Crate needs a big overhaul in my opinion. The experience of using Asus products is hindered by it and that's a big, big issue. So I suppose the big question is, would I go out and buy this headset to use as my main headset? And if I'm being totally honest, I can't say I would. Although the headset is generally okay, the software is terrible and just ruins the whole experience. You can use the headset without the software, but you'll lose a huge amount of customization and you'll be stuck with default EQ and mic settings, which by default the mic settings just pick up so much background noise. So that's not really an option. So that's all for today, guys. I hope you liked the video. Please leave a like down below if you did. Let us know in the comments your thoughts on this Asus headset and if you've had issues with Armory Crate in the past before, because I know I have personally. If you want to check out our merch, there'll be a link in the description as always. And make sure you subscribe to Kit Guru with the notification bell on to keep up with the latest gaming news and reviews. Anyway, I've been Matt. This has been the Asus ROG Delta S wireless headset. I will speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.